yoga talk with me and my guest today is Nikki Bowen she is amazing I know Nikki for a few years now she is a great teacher but I never really had a chance to practice with her so there it is I'm very excited to have her hi Nikki <laughs> hi Masha thanks for having me today absolutely absolutely this is wonderful so as you know we just kind of start with a little chat and talking about yoga talking about um, life in general and I usually ask a few questions so my question to you would be what are you doing for a living? <laughs> um, the better question would be what do I not do right? <laughs> so I stay pretty busy um, I have a nine to five in which I'm a project manager so I work in some pretty high profile high stress environments um, I'm also a mother to a beautiful 10 year old girl <laughs> and a graduate student on oh, top wow. of teaching. So I tend to live a pretty fast paced lifestyle. Yeah. Wow. So graduate student, um, I want to hear a little bit more about this. What are you studying? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so my journey through yoga really kind of opened up the door for me to have a better understanding of that our mind and our body is so connected. Um, so after I got my yoga certification, I realized that I had a bigger passion to pursue, which was in the mental health field. And boy, is that needed uh, in, this, in this time. So I've been working on going back for my master's in clinical mental health counseling. Oh, wow. So you are in the second year of your studies, you're graduating year or middle mm -hmm. year yeah yeah so what's the path you're going to be taking transition from project management to um, that's a good question um <laughs> in the spirit of 2020 i am kind of just going to relax and let the universe take care of that um i think ultimately it'll be a slow transition for me and at some point, um, you know, that kind of turns into more of like a holistic wellness practice between mental health counseling, yoga. I'm also a level two Reiki practitioner. Um, so I plan on getting, you know, my master's certificate in Reiki as well. Um, so that way there's just a lot of mind body modalities that I have an offering to work with within the community. Wow. Wow. This is, this is amazing. That we we change our paths just through all these experiences that we had this year. Um, yeah, th this is great. So I wanted to ask you actually because we never had a chance to talk about your path, your journey through yoga. So how did you find yoga? Sure, absolutely. So I found yoga. Gosh, I think I was 15 when I attended my first class with my mom. Um, so it was a, it was a nice connection there. And then of course, you know, teenagers as they will get busy and focus on different things. Um, but I really came back to my mat and made a decision to immerse myself more in my practice because it just gave me this place of refuge. Um, and it was a huge place of self exploration. And I also noticed I could come and I could just show up as myself, whether that was happy, sad, <laughs> whatever those emotions were coming that day, my mat would accept all of them and kind of give me a space for reflection and processing. Um, so it was a spot when I hit a little turmoil in life, I would say a few years ago, um, that kind of led me to go do my teacher training. And originally it was just for me, just for my personal practice. Um, but 
as the universe would have it, <laughs> it expanded past that. And, you know, I was able to do some workshops and have some different, some other offerings too. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Now you're taking it to the next level with all yeah, that's the goal. <laughs> yeah. No, it's amazing. And it's truly needed, you know, mental health professionals are so, um, we don't have enough of them my opinion and i think we need more people who are so dedicated and so passionate about providing this type of service and content it's amazing so um your daughter does she practice with you um every once in a while she does so i actually um you can see that big box in the corner there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, she'll practice the the physical and the asana portion of it with me sometimes, but I also chant. That's a harmonium back there. Um, so we'll play music and just sing together. And she really enjoys that piece of it and kind of like the Hindu mythology behind it and just the essences of the deities. Um, so it's a lot of fun. She enjoys that piece. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, there's some fascinating stories that you can read through Gita and some other, you know, interesting books with a lot of uh, mythological figures. Mm -hmm. But I, I found they're very, um, uh, you can relate to them. They're very actual for this time, and like any time. They're timeless, truly. Yeah, there's some they're beautiful lessons. Stories. Yeah. Well, would you, what would you like to teach today? So today I figured we'd go through kind of a slow flow in a chakra meditation. Um, so within my 200 hour, uh, before I got there, <laughs> I'll go back a little bit. Um, my mom and my best friend and I were at Wanderlust. And uh, so it's this little yoga festival that comes to Tampa usually every year. I think they skipped this year. Uh, just due to the current environment, but I was like the person who was sleeping and drooling on myself during meditation. Um, <laughs> if you would have ever asked me, would you teach meditation? I would have been like, no, not in a million years. Um, but within my, my teacher training, I really found this affinity for the chakra system. And we can talk a little bit about that because I'm not sure how familiar everybody is with that. Um, but essentially, we are made up of little energetic points all along our bodies. And there's seven of them that run along our main channel here, which is called the Shashumna. And essentially, those seven main chakras, which chakra also means wheel or disc, um, essentially, it's a wheel of light. And they run along the center here, and they represent certain developmental stages within our life or how we perceive and act in the world. So with everything that's been going on um, and all of the changes, I've noticed personally a lot of being shifted into a space that doesn't feel as stable. Um, you know, there's a lot of questions in the world, of course, a lot of uncertainty going on with current events. Um, so I thought that today, maybe we'd go through a slow flow so we can really drop into the body and create that mind body connection. And then we'd go through a root and a heart chakra meditation. So All right. we can talk so we a little can bit about start those. seated just in a comfortable position and we'll start just by tuning into our breath. So I mentioned the chakra system and oftentimes, um, we don't run in a balanced state. It takes some consciousness to kind of really tune into what's happening on the energetic side of the body. Um, so today we'll just try and cultivate a space of awareness. We're not really trying to change anything. We're in essence, just tapping into what is our current state and then perhaps um, through the meditation, you may find more of an inquiry of space of a desired state, but we'll kind of let the universe and our natural subconscious um, lead us into that space. So in talking a little bit more about the chakra system, um, our heart chakra is the place where we feel and we give love. Um, it's also where we receive love and how we receive love. 
So I know with, um, you know, the, the world kind of turned upside down in the last few months, um, there's a lot of collective anxiety and kind of a collective heaviness. So today, my hope is that we can kind of tune in to our own heart centers here and try and alleviate that just a little bit. Because as we start to heal and we start to become more aware of our current state, um, you know, that kind of has a ripple effect in our environment and into the people around us. We give them permission to do the same. And our root chakra is located at the base of our spine in between our hips. And that is a space of um, stability, a space of security. Uh, I know for many of us, our routines have just changed so much. So today, um, you know, we'll kind of root back into that root chakra and um, really pull out that connection to the earth and that stability and the grounding that we also crave. So as we get started, we'll start with a little bit of breath work. Um, and this is called a Nadi Shodhana breath. And essentially it's a balancing breath. So I'll explain how to do it and then we'll do at least maybe five or six rounds um, before we get into our physical practice here. So the idea is that you can take your hands. Um, I like to use my thumb and my pinky. So you'll bring your arm up and you'll close off the right side of your nostril. So you'll inhale through the left and you can make this about a three or four count. Um, I'll count it to a four, but just make sure that you're doing what feels comfortable within your body. There's no pressure in this breath. Um, so try and keep it gentle and try and tune into what you need. If the balancing breath isn't working for you, it's always okay if you wanna just place your hands on your stomach and just give nice big deep belly breaths. So we'll close off the right nostril with the thumb. Inhale through the left. Close off the left nostril, open the right. Exhale through your right nostril. Two, three, four. Inhale through your right nostril, two, three, four. Close the right side, open the left with the pinky. Exhale, two, three, four. Close left, open right, inhale right. One, two, three, four. Close right, open left. Exhale, two, three, four. Inhale left two, three, four, close left, exhale right, two, three, four, inhale right, two, three, four, close right, open left, exhale, two, three, four, inhale left, two, three, four, close left, open right, exhale, two, three, four. Last one, inhale right, two, three, four. Close right, open left. Exhale, two, three, four. You can allow your hands to drop back down to your lap, maybe closing the eyes, taking the breath back to normal, and settling into how the body may feel and how it's presently showing up. So option to keep the eyes open or close as we move through the seated portion of our practice. Feel the space where your sit bones meet your mat. Perhaps where the sides, the tops of your feet may meet the difference of temperature between your feet and where the material from your yoga pants or leggings may cover. Listen to the sound of your breath. Inhale, arms will rise, come above the head, 
And on the exhale, as we swing them down, the left arm will come underneath of the right. So you may find a bind with your hands here. It's also okay just to press the backs of the, of the hands into one another. So you'll lift the elbows, they'll come out towards the shoulders. You should feel a big stretch through the shoulder blades in the back. And as you inhale, start to bring the arms up and tip your heart center out and up. On your exhale, we'll draw the belly in, the elbows will come down along with the head, kind of just bowing into self, tapping into that core center very gently. Inhale, coming back up towards the sky. Just very gently waking up the spine. Exhale, we'll carve back in. Belly button comes towards your spine, head comes down towards your mat. Inhale, we'll come back to center. Unwind the arms very gently. We'll come all the way back up. Fingertips come towards the sky. And this time, as we exhale, you'll open the arms and open the palms, coming into a goddess-like pose in the top of the body. Feeling the heart center shine. Exhale, bringing the arms forward. The blades of the hands can touch. Forearms will touch. Inhale, find that opening through the heart center. Exhale, arms come back in. Right arm will come across the chest and your left arm can come across to your right shoulder. Maybe putting a little bit of pressure on that shoulder if you'd like, kind of pulling the skin away from the neck. You can tilt the head towards the left side of the shoulder if you'd like. Maybe circle out the wrists. Just taking a motion that feels good to you. All right, exhale, allow for the arms to float back down. And we'll go through to the other side. So inhaling, arms come up. And on your exhale, this time your right arm will come underneath of your left. So perhaps the backs of your hands touch, coming into more of an eagle-like posture, or you may find a full bind if that feels comfortable. Elbows will come up to shoulder length. We'll inhale, press the heart center forward, gaze comes towards the ceiling. As you're ready, exhale, we'll carve into the body, pulling the belly button towards the spine head dropping down, still keeping that tension and that press, pressing through the arms as we come back up, inhaling, opening through the heart, exhale, carve back in. On your next inhale, we'll come back to center. Allow for the arms to unwind, inhale, taking them back towards the sky. Exhale, cactus the arms, palms shine wide, forward, fingertips are spread out. Inhale, bring them in to close. Forearms and the blades of the hands can touch. Inhale, find that opening through the heart center, through the back body. Exhale, bring the arms in to close. And this time we'll take the left arm across. Right hand can come to left shoulder. You might give it a little tug, just kind of pulling the skin away from the neck. And perhaps your right ear drops towards your right shoulder. If you found a circle with the wrist on the other side, you may do so on this one. All right. Exhale, allow the palms to come down. So we'll take the left leg out straight. You can place your right foot just outside of your left thigh. And if you feel like you're craving a little bit more, there's always an option to bring the left heel in towards the glutes. So we'll get set up and really rooting down through the sit bones, feeling them grounded into your mat. Inhale, the arms will lift. 
left elbow comes outside of right knee and your right hand will plant just behind your seat. We'll start very gently, maybe just taking the head to the side first. As you inhale, grow taller through the spine. And as you're ready, you can exhale and maybe take your gaze over your right shoulder. Always an option for your left hand to come across through the heart center as well, to give that just a little bit more stability and connection to that space where we breathe through, where we feel through, and where we love through. On your inhale, finding length through the spine, and on your exhale, twisting from the lower belly around the belly button. Exhale, we'll come back to center, keeping the leg formation. If your leg was straight, we'll work to kind of tuck that left heel in. And we're gonna walk over. So your knees are kind of um, in a twisted leg position, almost like a cow face pose. We'll start to walk the palms of the hands out, taking a variation of puppy pose. So allowing the heart to melt down towards the mat. Perhaps your forehead meets your mat. Maybe your chin meets your mat. If your forehead is on your mat, you may just roll it back and forth once or twice, waking up that third eye center. Begin to inhale and slowly walk the hands back up, coming all the way back to our seat. And we'll switch those legs now. So right leg can come out long and the left foot will come over and outside of the right thigh. So just setting up in a space that's comfortable for you. If it's in your practice, always an option to tuck the, the right heel in towards the left glute. Um, just be mindful that your seat is still resting and grounded on your mat. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, right elbow comes outside of left knee and your left hand will come behind your seat. So we'll first just start very gently, kind of easing into that twist, finding that space in the lower belly button. Inhale, growing tall. Exhale, perhaps you twist a little more and take your gaze over the left shoulder. Always the option to take the right palm to the heart center, kind of help with that press and that leverage. Inhale, growing tall. Exhale, twisting a little bit more from that area right around the belly button. We'll come back to center as you're ready. And we'll take that variation of puppy on the other side. So pulling the right foot in towards that left glute, we'll slowly begin to walk over the knees. So legs are crossed. Hands will walk out towards the end of your mat and you'll begin to melt the heart center down towards your mat. Perhaps your forehead or your chin rests. And just notice how does this side feel, right? We're talking about balance today, about the chakras. So does one side feel differently than the other? And it very well may, it usually does. One more big breath here. We'll slowly begin to walk the hands back up can unfurl the legs, coming into more of a tabletop position. So your fingertips are spread wide on your mat and shoulders are over your wrists. Option to keep your toes on your mat with your heels up or you can place the tops of your feet on your mat. Whichever variation you decide to take, feel that connection through the feet and through the hands. We'll inhale, right arm rises towards the sky. Now on your exhale, that right hand will thread through the knee and the palm. Coming down for thread the needle, the right shoulder will meet your mat. Perhaps the right ear meets your mat as well. Couple of options here. You may wish to walk your left hand towards 
the top right corner of your mat, or perhaps you take it behind your back. Taking a moment to open the shoulder, open through the heart center, while still feeling that groundedness and that connection through your knees and your feet. Exhale, left hand meets the mat by your face underneath of your shoulder. We'll very gently press through that left palm. Right arm will swing back up towards the sky make a few big circles so you can take this even in like a sitting motion back and forth making it really exaggerated taking up space on your mat and as you're ready right hand will plant back on your mat right palm meets your mat inhale now left arm comes up towards the sky Exhale, left fingertips spread through in between the right knee and the right wrist. Left shoulder comes down, perhaps left ear meets the mat as well. And whichever arm variation you took on the other side, you want to take to this side. So that may be walking the right fingertips towards the top left corner of the mat, feeling that opening through the shoulders. That may be to swing that right palm behind the back around the waistline. Rolling the shoulder head back, feeling the connection of the left shoulder, the knees and the feet to your mat. Turning to the breath. Right hand comes back to plant underneath of its shoulder. Fingertips wide, slowly press through those right fingertips. Unfurl the left arm back to the sky. Exhale, left hand comes back to meet the mat. Option to take a little waggle here. Gently step the right foot in between the hands. So you may need to move your left knee back a little bit if you're feeling like you want a little bit more space in the stretch. Essentially, we're going for a low lunge. So <clears throat> firmly planting your right foot, you can gently lift all five toes and place them back down on your mat, just feeling that connection to the earth. And as you're ready, we'll slowly start to rise up, coming out of the knee, arms come up, Exhale, finding the cactus again, opening through the heart center. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, cactus it back. Taking the gaze towards the sky. It's almost as if you have a little string coming from your heart and somebody's lifting you out of your rib cage and your hips. Inhale, arms come back to sky. Your hands will come back down to frame your feet. Slowly shift the hips back so that right leg starts to straighten a little bit for half splits. Option as to where you want to keep your foot. I like to keep my foot flexed so my toes kind of come back towards my face. It gives a little bit more of an intense stretch through the hamstrings. And as you're ready, you can find length in your upper body and your torso. Exhale, allow for your head to fall towards your leg. Carving into self. Inhale, walk the hands forward, roll forward back to low lunge, shining the heart forward. Exhale, we'll slowly push it back out to half split. Just feeling the notion of the opposite sensations in our body. Inhale, shifting back towards that right foot, pulling the heart center through. Left hand plants on the mat. Inhale, right arm comes towards the sky. You may choose to make some big circles with that. Right hand plants inside of the right foot. 
practice of finding that hand inside of the sole, the right foot may scooch out a little further towards the side and maybe towards the top corner of the mat to set up for lizard lunge. So option to stay on the palms just like this, or if it feels good, you may want to come down to the forearms, a block, a pillow, perhaps whatever you have that you're working with. Allow for your head to drop towards your mat. So we're trying to think of softening around the muscles in the base of the neck. Allowing tension to drop out of the shoulders. One more breath here. All right, as you're ready, we'll sweep that right leg back coming back into our tabletop position. You may choose to make a couple of circles. That lizard lunge can be a bit of a hip opener. So just allowing the joint to return. All right, and we'll work with the left side now. So taking the left foot, placing it in between your hands, find that stability first through your feet, perhaps lifting the toes on the front foot, and planting them back down on your mat, feeling where that connection is. Option to keep the top of the right foot on the mat, firmly pressing into it, or perhaps you're on your toes for a little bit more active stance. As you're ready and you feel grounded, we'll inhale, arms will come up, sweeping wide, taking what you need. Exhale, cactus the heart forward. Gaze comes through towards the sky, feeling the stability in your feet and in your legs. Inhale, arms come up, hips straighten out. Exhale, leaning into that lunge. That notion of offering what you have in your heart to your space, to your room, perhaps to a special person, place, or thing. Inhale, arms come back up. Exhale, hands will plan outside of your left foot, slowly shifting the hips back to set up for half splits. You may play with pointing and flexing the toes to find what feels nice. Take the torso long, fingertips are on the mat, and as you're ready, exhale, your forehead can drop towards your knee. Resting in this half split, allowing for the hamstrings to find space to open. Slowly start to crawl your hands forward, coming back into that low lunge, shining through the heart center. And as you're ready, exhale, we'll take it back to half splits one more time. Inhale, slowly rolling forward, opening back through the heart center. This time, left hand comes inside of the left sole of the foot. That left foot may creep out a little wider towards the left edge of the mat or perhaps towards the corner to set up for lizard on this side. So again, always options for your arms, perhaps your hands stay planted on the mat and shoulders are a little above the knee. You may opt to come down to your forearms, to a pillow, to a block, whatever sensation it is that you're looking for, and you can take a few breaths in. Slowly start to come back to the palms if you were on your forearms. Bring that left foot back into the low lunge position. Right hand will plant on your mat. Inhale, the left arm goes towards the sky. You may opt to take some big circles here, opening up the shoulders. All right, left hand plants. Put the left leg back into its tabletop position. You may take a few circles just to allow the hips to readjust. 
All right. And as you're ready, we'll come down to our seats, set up for a couple of restorative postures so the body can drop in for meditation. So you can come down to your back. We'll start with just a supine twist, allowing the shoulders to meet the mat. You'll shift your hips maybe an inch or so to the left and allow for the knees to fall to the right. Your arms can be in that cactus position that we use through our practice, or they can be out to a T. You may take your right hand over to your knees if you want to engage that twist a little bit more. Feel the openness through the heart center. Tuning into the breath and back into the sensations, temperature, perhaps smells. Three more big breaths here. We'll slowly begin to bring the knees back to center. So soles of the feet are flat on the mat. And this time you'll wanna shift your hips about an inch or so to the right. Allow for the knees to fall to the left. You may need to readjust your shoulders just to make sure that everything feels right. The idea is for this to feel good in your body. So trust yourself to find the shape that you need. Arms can remain in that cactus position out to a T, or you may bring your left hand over to your knees to engage that twist a little bit more. Tuning back into the breath. Noticing if you can enrich it. challenging yourself to stay in the here and now and in the present to tune in to what you need. Three more big breaths. And at this time, I'll invite you to take anything else that you might need, that your body might be calling for before we set up for the meditation portion of our practice. So that might be just a, going into a little ball, massaging the back a little bit. Be happy baby. And as you're ready, um, I'll offer you space to get set up for meditation. So if you have any blankets or blocks around, you're welcome to do this laying down or sitting up. It's essentially whatever position that's going to feel most supported for your body. So sometimes I even like to lay back and I'll kind of fold a blanket to go underneath of my shoulders, which is kind of a very gentle heart opener since this is where we're working in today. So whatever that looks like for you. And we'll start to tune back into the space of the breath. At this point, not trying to manipulate or change the breath, but just tapping into our body in that space where it's quite amazing and voluntarily does all of this for us without even having to think about it. 
you may opt to bring the shoulders up towards the ears and allow the shoulder blades to drop down the back. Feel the length of your spine. We'll start with a short body scan. So with this body scan is really the intention of bringing awareness and perhaps a little bit of softening might happen as well. We'll start with both of the feet. Just tuning in to the soles of the feet, the tiny muscles around the top of the feet. Feeling your ankles where they rest in their space not having to hold anything. Allow that awareness to travel up through the shins, the calves, perhaps finding softness around the tiny muscles in our knees. Tune in to the denseness of the thighs and the femur bone. Feel the seat where it rests on your mat, allowing for gravity to do the work. This is a space where your mat holds you. Call your awareness to your lower belly, allowing for it to be soft, feeling the gentle rise and fall of the belly as the breath moves through it. Take that awareness and softening through the back body all the way into the shoulders, into the back. Starting to tune in to the warmth of the heart center. Feeling the rib cage shift as the diaphragm moves up and down. Take that softening into the tops of the shoulders. A deep focus on where the tiny muscles of the neck run into the shoulders. Noticing if you may be holding any breath or tension there. And with this newfound awareness with the breath and with the lightness in the heart center, See if you can allow for that space to soften. Feel the full length of the arms resting heavy. Calling your awareness to the centers of the hands. Notice if you can feel the air on each finger pad. Calling awareness and softness in the shoulders all the way down to the feet. Your next inhale breath will soften the throat perhaps allowing your tongue to drop away from the roof of your mouth. Your teeth might gently part, softening any tension through the jaw. Allow for the cheekbones to soften in the space in between the eyebrows, represent light and looseness. 
allowing the face to rest in a very gentle, natural state. Call the awareness now to the scalp and the back of the head. Gentle space of knowing. The body is softened and the mind is present. Imagine a tiny glowing red ball in between the hips. And with every inhale and exhale, that ball gets a little bigger. It begins to sprout little tree limbs. Those roots begin to grow down and through each leg, going through the thigh, the knee, and outside of the feet. Those roots begin to take hold into the earth below. running through the dirt. They begin to marry with ancient trees of wisdom. And they're on for thousands of years, intertwining with their knowledge, their support. These roots keep growing down to the center of the earth till they reach rich red magma the Earth's core center. And through your roots, as if they're a straw, you begin to sip that rich red energy back through them, back through the core center, back through the intertwining with the trees of wisdom, that Earth energy comes back through the dirt below you, through your feet, your shins, your thighs, and into the space of your hips. You feel the heat. You begin to feel the heat and the rich red fire. burning bright, burning beautiful. And begin to shed your armor so you realize you are safe and you need no protection. Begin to shed the things that are not serving your greatest good. Replace them into the fire as an offering. As you watch the flames transform them, you begin to feel the soil underneath of your feet, damp and cold. You begin to make your way, looking around, seeing the trees, the forest, hearing the songs of the birds and the sound of wildlife around you. your feet move across the rich soil below, you're doing so with a complete space of freedom, free from armor, free to allow your heart to lead you. You stop to smell the flowers, you take in a deep appreciation for the green life around you. Taking in the gentle breeze upon your face. You begin to come to a clearing. And in this clearing, you see a beautiful body of water. You hear the sound of a waterfall in the distance. You see a butterfly flutter past. 
representing that change, that transformation and freedom to be authentically you. We begin to wade into the water, feeling the warm sunlight upon your face. As you begin to flatten out on your back to float, you can hear your breath. Looking up, clear blue sky. You begin to cultivate an offering, offering of love, something that you hold so dear. And you allow for this offering as if it's a bubble to float towards the sky, allowing for it to have freedom and space to flourish. And with the breath floating in that body of pristine blue water, you begin to cultivate a sense of gratitude. This gratitude can be for anything at all. Maybe for the beautiful weather, the flowers. It may be for yourself. Perhaps another person. begin to place that gratitude into another bubble, watching the gentle breeze carry it away, feeling the warm sunlight on your skin. You can now rest in complete peace and freedom. sensations, the temperature upon your skin. Perhaps you give a little wiggle to the fingers or the toes. And as you're ready, you can flutter the eyes open. Thank you very much for practicing with me, Masha. Namaste.